there are two voices in the Christian community that are promoting completely opposite theologies. One says that God wants gays to change their sexual behavior and to help them do it. The other says God made them gay and therefore it's alright with him if they engage in homosexual relationships. The question is, which viewpoint reflects God's agenda? Joining me to discuss this volatile issue is performance artist Peterson Toscano, author of Doing Time in the Homo Novo Halfway House, and a self-described survivor of the ex gay movement, and Alan Chambers, president of Exodus International, a nonprofit organization that says its goal is to help people find freedom from homosexuality through the power of Jesus. Well, Jill, let me just start with you. Um, can gays really change into heterosexuals, and is that what God wants for every gay person? Well, Lee, first of all, thanks for having me. Sure. Obviously, because I'm sitting here um, saying that my story is that I used to be gay and now I'm not. Obviously, people who are involved in homosexuality, tempted by homosexuality, and gay identify can change. And is it God's intent? Well, I think we in the Christian community often focus too much on one sin over another. And, and I think that the broader question that we should ask is, does God want us to be more like Him? Does He want us to live in a way that's compatible with how He created us? And I believe the answer is yes. So that applies to our topic today. Does God want men and women who are involved in homosexuality to find freedom in Christ through Him? Absolutely. But the most important thing is that they find Him. Okay, before we go on, uh, you mentioned your story. Give us uh, your story just in a nutshell. We all have something that that we struggle with in a sin relationship. And for me, that issue was homosexuality. I knew that there was condemnation in the Bible for um, uh, the sin of homosexuality, but I didn't know there was freedom until I was about 17 years old. And that's when I found the truth, the life-giving truth, that God had a way out for me. And when I was 18 years old, I started seeking His freedom. And though it wasn't an overnight process, it was a very long process, it led me here 15 years later to be uh, more joyful than I ever thought possible and living in a relationship with him that I never dreamed was, was possible. Okay, Peterson, your story is quite different. Uh, tell us a bit of your story. It's similar in one way in that I was 17 too, and for 17 years, because of my religious beliefs, I tried to change. And so when I found out that the change was possible, I got involved in a good church, started studying the Bible, spent a lot of time in prayer, got counseling, both pastoral counseling and professional counseling, went to Exodus programs, support groups, even a two-year time in a residential program. And after 17 years and over $30,000, nothing changed for me. Just like most of the people I've met in the ex gay movement, I was just as gay as I started. And I came to the place of finally being able to say, all right, well, this is who I am, and let me begin to deal with that. What's your relationship with God like now? I'm a Quaker, and you now those are not the people with the horse and buggies, okay? <laughs> I'm a Quaker, and uh, I, spirituality is very important to me. My relationship with God is very important. I go to worship every Sunday. I make sure I don't travel on Sundays just so I can get to the meeting house for worship. I'm involved very much with my local community and my church and all. It's very important to me, my relationship with God and and that started when I was 17, when I first became a Christian. How do you reconcile uh, your um, lifestyle with Scripture? Ah, that's an excellent question, and I really struggle with it. I mean, I spend probably more per month on soy lattes than I do on feeding the poor. And I, I say that because, you know, like it's a great question for every Christian in America to answer. How do any of us reconcile, and reconcile our lifestyle with the Scripture? But I don't think that's the question you're really asking me. You're asking me, how do I reconcile right, my gay open. lifestyle? Right, sure. Yeah. But, how, do you reconcile, how do I reconcile the gay lifestyle? Right. And, and in that question, I hear an assumption that the gay lifestyle is a certain thing. That many people assume being gay means you go out to clubs every night, you get drunk, you do a lot of drugs, have sex with all kinds of strangers, you do risky behaviors. That's not my lifestyle. And there are many, 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 many ones. Right, and I didn't think you were, but a lot of people, that's what they think when you say gay lifestyle. But you see no conflict between uh, uh, engaging in, in gay sex and what the Bible says. I see no conflict with two people who love each other to build their lives around a relationship. And if sex is part of that relating, I don't see a problem with that. Because God desires truth 
but the inmost parts, as it says in the psalm. And for me, the most important thing is that I am truthful with God about who I am. Okay, let's uh, take it back to Alan. Alan, uh, what do you do with stories like Peterson's or people who say, you know, I went through these programs, I tried to change, I didn't change, God didn't change me. Well, you know, I think that we need to put the onus back on ourselves because when I was involved in homosexuality, I'm not saying that there wasn't a certain amount of pleasure in it, that there wasn't a certain amount of freedom that I felt in being able to finally express myself and to, to do what had felt so innate to me all of my life. But what I had to do was I had to begin to, as a Christian, filter what felt natural, what felt innate, what felt lifelong through the, the filter of Scripture and God's Word. And God's Word to me says that homosexuality wasn't something that He intended for His creation, like a host of other, other things. And for me, I had to simply trust that what he was saying was the truth, and that he had a good reason for creating us in a way that didn't include living as a homosexual. And for me, I had to reconcile the fact that I might never feel differently, that I might never feel straight, that I, never, I might always feel gay, but that didn't give me license to do something that God absolutely said was wrong and dangerous for me. The difference came for me when I stopped trying, and I started trusting, and I started saying, God, no matter if my feelings ever change, I'm going to find you obviously know the scripture. Jesus makes no reference whatsoever in the Gospels to homosexuality. He's completely silent about it. I mean, he talks about lust. He talks about hypocrisy. He talks about adultery. He talks about divorce. But he never says anything about homosexuality. It's the church, the conservative church, that has a problem with homosexuality, not Jesus. And I figure if it's well, a big issue for him, why are we making it into such a big issue? Let me, let me jump in there, Pearson, and, and I'll agree with you. Jesus doesn't say a lot about a lot of things. He doesn't say anything about incest or, um, or spousal abuse or different things like that. So Jesus is silent um, in scriptures um, about a lot of things. But the fact of the matter is that Jesus' entire 33-year life isn't recorded in scripture. So there's a lot left to our imagination. But what I was referring to... And as far as scripture goes, in Galatians it says that all scripture is God breathed. And homosexuality certainly is mentioned as a sin, as something that his creation shouldn't be involved in. So when I say that, that I'm living um, my life according to biblical truth, it's that I believe all scripture is, is relevant for us today, Old and New Testament. And, and for me, I know the truth that freedom from homosexuality is possible and that God provided that um, as Paul wrote to the people in Corinth. Okay, we need to take a break. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion in just a few moments. Stay with us. Coming up, Dave and service to God.